Hello everyone. How's it going? I know it's late noonish here. And I have been at an appointment this morning and then tried to come home and sleep, which didn't really work. <laughs> so I guess I'm a little um, just not, I don't have enough sleep to really feel like I'm clear headed. So I'm sorry about that. But I am eating a french fry. Trying to get some food while we have our spiritual food. And today we're in Judges 7, in the last part of Judges 7, where Gideon does a surprise attack on the Midianites, and it's really brilliant what happens. So I'll just eat a couple more fries and see if anyone's going to jump on. I want to thank you guys for your continued prayers and how you keep lifting me up. I'm just so thankful. Seasons can be hard. There can be hard seasons and I'm just grateful for any prayer support. This is a vegan sausage. Just thought I'd tell you. So Penny and I are vegan, actually Phoebe is too, and um, that's all I need to say about that. All right, when you get with me at some point in the day, if it's tomorrow, whenever you can catch up, we're on page 88 in the book. All right, I'll stop eating now. Gideon defeats Midian. Ready? <clears throat> when Gideon heard about the man's dream and what it meant, he fell to his knees and worshipped Yahweh. Let me explain to you what's happening here. Yesterday, their enemy, the camp of the Midianites, there were people in there. One guy had had a dream and the other guy interpreted it. Neither of them knew the Lord. Neither, neither of them worshipped Yahweh, but God used, quote unquote, heathen, sorry, I'm still swallowing, <clears throat> to deliver a message to Gideon. And someone um, overheard it. Um, yeah, someone overheard this and brought the message back to Gideon. And so what I wrote in the margin here is that we can be comforted by God's word to us, which is what he originally gave to them, saying, you know, go go in the strength that you have. And, and he put the water on the fleece, and then they put the water on the ground, and he did the two things that Gideon asked for to show that he's truly sending him and that he would truly be with him. God's word, you can't go wrong. That is his promise. But then, on top of it, he confirms it with a dream. And he goes way outside of the box and confirms it with the enemy of all things. So, I'm not saying that that's the usual way, but the confirmation can come through a dream, through a vision, through a, a sign that you pass by, through a song that you hear, but confirmation comes if you'll just be alert. And the Lord really wants to speak to us. So when he does, we should do as Gideon and fall to our knees and worship him. Then he went back to the Israelite camp and shouted, Come on, it's time to strike. Come on, everybody, it's time to strike. Yahweh's giving you victory over the Midianite army. He divided his 300 men into three groups and gave each man a shofar and a clay jar holding a torch inside of it. So they did not have weapons. That's a huge part of this story. They only had shofars, which they will be blowing here in a minute, and a clay pot that was um, disguising a torch that they had inside for light. He told them, follow me, 
and when I get to the edge of the camp, watch me closely and do exactly what I do. When my group and I blow our shofars, then you blow yours all around the camp and shout for Yahweh and for Gideon. So, <clears throat> um, it was the beginning of the middle of the midnight watch, and um, it's implying here that the that the nighttime was divided up for them into three watches. When it when it was in Jesus' day, when Jesus came, the Romans had adapted a four um, four night watch. So probably three hours divided up four times into 12 hours. But these guys apparently started at, a, at like a seven o'clock to 11, then 11 to three, and then three to seven again. And right after um, the middle watch had begun around 11 p.m., this is when they were gonna strike. And it says here in verse 19, just before midnight, after the changing of the Midianite guard, Gideon and his hundred men came to the outskirts of the camp. Then each of the three groups blew the shofars and broke the clay jars that hid the torches inside. So they were making a tremendous noise <clears throat> with the shofars and then they broke their clay jars and there was all this light that came up in the darkness. <clears throat> the shofars, um, represent our prophetic message of power and grace to conquer. <clears throat> we sound the shofar each time we proclaim the word of the Lord. The clay jars or the pitchers represent us. We are but clay vessels, it says in 2 Corinthians, who must be broken open so that Jesus can shine brightly through us. So imagine you're the clay jar, you know, we're all shaped differently into different um, beautiful designs that God has made and when he breaks us open through um, the trials and the suffering that we go through his light shines through us in, uh, and makes a way for battle. Each of the three groups blew the shofars and broke the clay jars that hid the torches inside. They held their torches in their left hands and the shofar in their right hand. Can you imagine this? Clay jar, shofar. Clay jar, shofar. Let's go, he says. <laughs> um, they shouted a thunderous battle cry, and their cry was, um, instead of shouting for Yahweh and for Gideon, which is what he told them to shout, I think it's noticeable here that they shouted a sword for Yahweh and for Gideon. So they were shouting a sword for Yahweh and Gideon. So that was implying that they were armed and dangerous and they were not. Um, each man held his position surrounding the camp and the entire enemy army was shocked awake by the thunderous noises of Gideon's army. They all panicked and fled yelling as they ran away. Have any of you ever been awakened suddenly at night by a loud noise? <coughs> It's shocking, isn't it? I'm gonna have to shut the door. So pardon me for a moment, there's a fly getting in. The dogs left the door open. One moment. Sorry about that. I can see flies coming in. Can't let that happen. Okay, so have you ever been woken up like that and you just are like not really you're disoriented, don't know what to do? Can you imagine if you were woken up in the middle of the night and you see all these lights, hear all this commotion, and the words that you hear being yelled by the opponent or, the, or your enemy is a sword for Yahweh and for Gideon. <clears throat> well, what happened was there was so much commotion that, that the Midianites panicked and fled. Um, the entire enemy army was shocked awake by the thunderous noises of Gideon's army and they all panicked and fled, <clears throat> yelling as they ran away in every direction. And when they sounded their 300 shofars, Yahweh made the enemy troops turn against each other with their own swords. So there was so much confusion that they actually started killing one another. The Midianites fled toward Zerorah as far as Beth Shittah, 
as far as the outskirts of the town of Abel Mahola near Tabith. Gideon called to arms men from the tribes of Naphtali, Asher, and both parts of Manasseh. They, re they rallied and then they pursued the Midianites as well. So he called for more troops other than the 300 and they came after the Midianites as they were fleeing. <clears throat> then Gideon sent messengers through the entire hill country of Ephraim saying, join us in the fight against the Midianites. Deny them access to the river Jordan and the streams as far as Beth Barah and prevent them from crossing over. <clears throat> the men of Ephraim came together and they held the river Jordan and the streams as far as Beth Barah. They captured the two Midianite chiefs this part's kind of gory, but they captured the two chiefs. Their names were Oreb and Zeb, O-R-E-B and Z-E-E-B, and they executed them. They executed Oreb at Oreb Rock and Zeb at Zeb Wine Press. While the Ephraimites continued to pursue the Midianites, they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was now east of the Jordan. So they brought their heads, kind of like Goliath and David. So um, this is what Oreb means. Oreb means raven and Zeb means wolf. And so it's interesting here that the two places that they were executed, uh, one of them at the wine press which reminds us of where Gideon was threshing his, his flour, his wheat. And then the other one uh, was, Oreb was executed at a rock. And that reminds us of how Gideon presented the loaves and the meat to the Lord as a sacrifice. And he burnt them up. I love the meaning of Abel Mahola, Mahola in verse 22. It means meadow of the dance. And I can just imagine myself dancing in a meadow over this victory. And that is, that place is actually the birth, birthplace of Elisha. And I love that. I love listening and watching Elisha's streams on YouTube, the various guests. And I want to tell them that this is the birthplace of Elisha, the meadow of the dam. <clears throat> so that is the story for today. Um, I just want to point out here that they won this victory without swords. Um, they had sh their shouting voices and their torches. And they had their shofars. They won a great victory by trusting God, and they didn't win it in their own strength. And there was unity. They all did what, what Gideon asked them to do. Their shouting and shofars would have stampeded the camels and the people, and that's what <laughs> caused all the commotion for the Midianites, and they weren't able to escape. And then um, this it says in the notes, this might be the first instance of psychological warfare in history. Sometimes warfare doesn't involve having arms, battle, battle arms. Sometimes it's psychological and they were definitely scared and panicked and then they went to their deaths. So all that to say you guys, we're done with chapter 7 today and tomorrow Saturday hopefully we'll be able to get into chapter 8 tomorrow hope that I'll see you tomorrow and that you'll be blessed the rest of this day Friday I'm sorry this was so late please comment if you feel like it when you get on here so I can know that some of you saw this and are with us and the Lord bless you in your battle today <clears throat> blow your horn uh, shout great victory as the Lord is instructed and hold up your torch hold up your light bring it out of your clay jar break your clay jar just as Gideon's army did and let there be victory in Jesus name all right
Hi Gail and hi Melissa. Hopefully you can hear all of this in the replay. Bye everyone.